If you're plum crazy about Mopars, you'll want to stick around today for our big block duster buildup. Today on Horsepower TV, we'll drop a 500 cubic inch big block between the fenders of a 71 duster. Also adding a new drive shaft, high performance starter, and a programmable ignition system. Then we'll take our bracket beast to the track and see if we can hook up all those 600 plus horses. So hang on for Horsepower TV. Hi, and welcome again to Horsepower TV. Whether you raced them or ran against them, everyone remembers the part Mopar played in horsepower history. Now, this high-winged warrior was built for competition on NASCAR's high-banked ovals, using the Hemi as the main means of motivation. Of course, this 1970 Superbird is a more streetable version, and it's powered by a 440 Magnum. Yeah, but Mopar made its mark on the drag strip as well, and today, hey, we're going to slam a 500 cubic inch big block between the fenders of this 71 duster. Now, you may remember this pump gas powerhouse from last season. With the help of Indy Cylinder Head, we took a Mopar Performance block and filled it with 10 to 1 pistons, a comp cam, and heads and intake from Indy Cylinder Head. Then we fed it with a Holley HP 950 carb, and on the dyno, it cranked out an amazing 672 horsepower. To harness all that power, we got a JW727 torque flight with a full race treatment. Now this thing's got a billet manual reverse valve body with a trans brake and an 8 inch converter so we can launch at 5500 RPM. Of course, dusters never came from the factory with a big block, so to save a little bit of weight, we've machined off the factory motor mount bosses from the block. Now that lets us use a motor plate, and aside from those weight savings, it also lets us move the motor back for better weight transfer. We had to modify the duster's K-member by removing the original engine mounts. Then we trimmed back the steering box mount to clear an external oil pump and added these gussets for strength. We also opened up the fender wells to allow clearance for these hooker headers. And we removed the master cylinder for now so we can have some extra room to install the engine. Speaking of which, once we get these headers in place, we can go ahead and drop that big block. All right, hold on a second. Let me get this header out of the way. There we go. All right, real slow. Real okay, slow. here we go. Hold on, let me level this thing out a little bit. All right. Looking pretty good over here. Now, we got lucky under here. We were able to use the stock cross member and trans mount, but let me show you a couple of modifications that we had to do to really plant the power. We started by tying the front and rear unibodies together with this frame connector that we fabbed out of two by two square tubing. Now, out back, we're using Mopar Performance 3,200 pound super stock springs, and then we've moved them inboard using this relocation kit from Competition Engineering. Now, those springs are going to let us launch this duster without the use of traction bars, and by moving them inboard, we can run a 12 and a half inch tire without tubbing those stock wheel wells. The drive shaft can go in next. Now, we ordered this lightweight aluminum piece from the driveline shop. Not only do we lose a few pounds, but the rotating mass is reduced as well. That's going to help this duster accelerate a lot quicker. Now, the rear end on this thing is an eight and three quarter Mopar that's been fitted with a 430 gear and a spool. Fuel cells are always a worthwhile safety addition to any race car, so we replaced our stock tank with one from RCI. Now, to make it all work, we had to cut out part of the original trunk pan and fab up this custom aluminum box. Of course, to make sure that our monster Mopar doesn't starve for fuel, we plumbed it with this Holly Black fuel pump and their new wafer style filter. Now together, this whole setup ought to flow more than 140 gallons per hour. To crank 500 cubic inches, you need a stout starter. So to put the right spin on our big block, we got this gear reduction starter from CSI. Now we like it because you can rotate it to just about any position to give clearance to headers and other accessories. Well, that about does it under here. You stay right there. We'll be back with more of our engine swap right after this.
And when we're done, we'll send that duster down the drag strip to see how its power is portrayed in ETs. Welcome back to the shop and our big block duster buildup. Now we've already installed this 500 cubic inch engine and hooked up the rest of the drivetrain. Now it's time to start bolting on the rest of the hardware, starting of course with this B&M Pro Ratchet Shifter. Now since it's a ratchet shifter, hey, we can only bang one gear at a time so no more missed shifts. And this positive safety lock for reverse, well that ought to keep the tech inspectors happy at the track. Now it comes with a heavy duty race cable and this cool cover. We chose a location for our shifter that'd be comfortable for the driver. After all, you don't want to be groping for that gear shift at high speeds. Now, we're using studs here that have already been attached to the floor to mount our shifter. Then we can route the cable, hook up the linkage, Finally, you can install the cover and the shifter ball. We're going to use Holly's Strip Annihilator Ignition System to fire off our monster motor. Not only does it have three separate rev limiters, but allows you to control the timing with this handheld programmer. We're going to mount it inside here by the shifter to isolate it from heat and vibration. Now with our wiring fed through the firewall, we go ahead and make our connections. Now that our ignition's hooked up, we can go ahead and finish off our fuel system. Now we're going to start by connecting our fuel line to this pressure regulator. It's got a gauge on it and we'll adjust it to 7 psi once the engine's running. Then we can hook the fuel line to the HP carb. And finally, we can hook up the linkage. Okay. You know, the only thing better than a cool head at the starting line is a cool engine in the staging lanes. So we've got this custom-made aluminum radiator from the folks at Be Cool. And to make sure we've got plenty of air moving through it, I've just installed a pair of these 11-inch electric fans by Spall. Before we bolt in that radiator, I want you to check this out. Now, we're using a cog belt drive system and a one-wire alternator from Jones Racing. Now, that way we can get rid of a little belt tension and free up a few horsepower. Plus, we don't have to worry about slinging belts anymore. Why don't you give me a hand slinging this into place? Happy to, partner. All right. How are we doing there? Fine. A little bit your way. Okay. Okay. Good. Now, after this, we can go ahead and install the battery. Well, I guess I'll go get those wheels and tires ready. There's that fuel cell Chuck was telling you about earlier. Now we're mounting our Optima battery here in the trunk for better weight distribution. This thing's got 750 cold cranking amps and it's built to resist vibration, which is good with any kind of race car. Now we're using Summit's trunk mount kit with it. That's for a cleaner installation and a more solid connection to our starter. I'm glad you made it back with those tires. We got everything hooked up. What do you say we'll make this monster make some noise? Well, let's do it. We replaced our raggedy rims with these centerline tail stars. Now they're polished billet, to give our duster a little bit of flash, out back here we got 15 by 10s with a five and a half inch backspace. Up front, 15 by fours. To hook us up, we're using Mickey Thompson ET Street tires out back, and they're Sportsman's up front. Now the cool thing about both tires is they're DOT legal. We're gonna finish off our front end with a fiberglass front bumper and the six-pack style hood from Glass Tech. Yeah, this is a good way to put our duster on a diet and get some cool air to the engine at the same time. Talk is cheap, and I know that we told you this thing made 672 horsepower on the dyno, but hey, I think it's time for us to put our motor 
where our mouth is. You know, in your case, it might fit. But seriously, we're taking this duster to the drag strip, and that's where we'll meet you right after this. Plus, later in the show, more of the horsepower TV you don't see and don't want to miss. <laughs> Why don't you drop it? <laughs> Hi, right, welcome back to Horsepower TV. Well, as promised, here we are at our local drag strip, Music City Raceway, and we're about to make that first eighth mile run to see if our hard work paid off. That's right. Now, once we get a solid baseline laid down, well, we're going to be able to show you some tips and tricks that you can use on your own race car to help it ET a little bit better and get down the track a little bit quicker. Now, the owner of this duster, Brian Silvati, is already strapped in, and he's ready to make a pass. What do you say we fire it up? I'm ready. All right, a 7.59 ET on this eighth mile track. Not bad, but see these black marks? Well, that means we're spinning the tires, so we better direct our attention to the suspension first. That's right, Joe. Now, this duster still has the stock leaf spring suspension, so we're gonna add a set of leaf clamps here. That's gonna help keep the suspension from winding up, plant those tires a little bit better. All right, 740 is definitely sneaking up on it, but we're still spinning the tires a little bit, so let's try one more suspension trick. All right, got those old shocks out from under there. Now, we're going to replace them with these adjustable pieces from Santoff Engineering. Now, here's something I really like. They've replaced the rubber bushings with these spherical rod ends, and that's going to give us a direct connection to the chassis. Now, they're also adjustable on both the extension and rebound. We're going to set the extension for as soft as we can, and down here, We'll set the rebound about medium to start with. Okay, obviously those suspension tricks work for us. Now we can direct our attention to under the hood. That's right. Now I've gone ahead and pulled a spark plug, and if you look right down here on the porcelain, you'll see that there's hardly any coloring, which means our engine's running just a little bit lean. So to correct that, I'm going to go ahead and jet up two sizes at all four corners, and well, we'll see what happens. You bet. Now, the idea is to keep jetting up or down as you make more passes until you quit making gains and then hold what you got. Now, as soon as we get through jetting on our carb, we'll make another pass. That 714 is pretty strong, Chuck, but I know we get this thing in the 60s. That's right. And timing is going to help us do that. Now, the engine's got 32 degrees total timing right now, and we're going to give it a couple more. And it's just like sneaking up on your carb jetting. You just make small changes until you're optimized, and then you hold what you got. Let's go ahead and fire it up. It's time to make a change. Great job, Brian. You ran a 696, man. We hit our mark. Yeah, we hope you hit yours, too, at the track. Meanwhile, stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, give me five. You on got that. it. Great job, Brian. You Good did job. it, man. Hi, welcome back. Well, now that we got that Mopar project handled, we got something for you Ford guys. Uh, that's right. Now, we're going to get going on this 460 big block here. That is, if I can ever get the nut broke loose with his ratchet. Well, here's the problem, Bowtie Bubba. You're not using the Ford wrench. He said that, not me. Now, while we're trying to figure out the rest of this stuff, why don't you take a look at some of our other mistakes? <laughs> that's right. Here it is, Horsepower TV Bloopers Part, part two. 2. Now, this laser etch scale here makes those adjustments easy. These things are available for most sport compacts at about 160 bucks a piece. 
Tell you what, while you're installing the door panels, I'll go lay out the headliner to get the wrinkles out. That's a good idea. Oh, while you're at it, don't forget the sun visors and... <laughs> <laughs> Finally, just put the stock plate back on, power it up, and it didn't come on. Finally, just put the stock plate back on, power it up. Hit the button. Finally. And finally, you can install the cover. And finally, you can install the cover. Finally, you can install the cover and the shifter ball. Well, now that we got that Mopar project handled, we got something for you Ford guys. That's right. We're going to go get... <laughs> 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 and the shifter ball. Okay, I'll give you a hand with the other one. All right. By the way, what are the torque specs? Well, 130 foot pounds. If I could find the <laughs> damn hole here, oh, I'd be see. in good shape. You can't say that on TV. <laughs> hey, you know I lost all my Ford wrenches a long time ago. You left Ford blue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Take this roll and we're just gonna see what happens, okay? And go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the shifter ball. You remember <laughs> you were You remember my <laughs> You remember I can't say you remember. You don't have to spend a fortune on graphics just to grab someone's attention. Take this flame job for insurance. No. Insurance. <laughs> <coughs> take this flame job for instance. Uh, why don't you take it? This will look good on your refrigerator, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you drop it? <laughs> I thought you were going to hold on to it and then take it back. Oh, I thought you were going to grab it and take it back. Oh. Seriously, though, these magnetic fast flames are a pretty good idea for cruise night from a company called Magnificent Impressions. Just one example of a way your throat needs to get clear. <laughs> First though, we gotta get rid of the seats, console, and carpet. That'll give us plenty of room so that we can attack the trans tunnel. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, that thing's no good anymore. Yeah, I don't reckon. <laughs> Hey, great job on those pedals. Hey, don't mention it. Hey, you're not done yet. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, great job on those pedals. Hey, don't mention it. Would you... Uh, f there we go. Tape rolling. This is it. Hey, great job on that pedal. Hey, thanks a lot. Horsepower's Hot Parts, brought to you by Summit Racing Equipment, your source for high-performance parts for 30 years. Today, we'll keep our race theme going with hot parts that'll help your horsepower and trim your time slips. Now, we're going to start with these cool underdrive pulleys from March Engineering. Now, they're going to spin your accessories a little bit slower, so you're going to free up some horsepower, up to 20, depending on your application. Plus, you won't have to worry about throwing belts anymore. Now, all these pieces are machined from billet aluminum, so it's a good way to add some flash without spending a lot of cash. Prices start at about 300 bucks. Well, this next part doesn't have much flash, but it sure does the job keeping trash away from you should your transmission explode. This CSI Trans Shield uses a Kevlar composite to contain the carnage. Now, it's got this gel coating. It weighs next to nothing. And it's an SFI-approved replacement for your transmission and flex plate shields. Now, they've got turbo 400s and power glides covered. And, well, now you can be, too, for around $300. Now, these next parts are going to help you get down the quarter mile quicker. They're Lakewood's traction bars for late model Camaros and Firebirds. They attach easily to your F-Body's rear end to eliminate wheel hop and enhance power transfer. Now they're built from heavy walled square tubing and they're adjustable for chassis preload. Best part though is that they won't unload your wallet either 
prices start about $200. Well, after you plant the power in your car, don't forget to plant yourself in front of the tube for our next show. And here's a look. Get ready for a Horsepower TV special, the 23rd Annual Street Machine Nationals, with wild and quick quarter mile drag racing, some of the most gorgeous show cars on the planet, and more. Can't get any better than this, this is beautiful. It's the Horsepower Happening of the Year, and a power party you don't want to miss. And remember, high performance fun is what this show is all about. Okay, considering next week's show, I guess we better move some Mopars out of the way. Chevelle's next week. That's My what favorite I favorite kind of car. Yeah. Horsepower TV is an RTM production.